In today's economy? Are you kidding me? I assume that the very large mail order stores can do it, but that defeats the purpose. Mail order at that point, you might as well just be pre-ordering it. A physical store that you can go in that just like, we carry every open order variant for every book. There's no way that business model works. In the Midwest, you know the best is there waiting. So come and join the conversation. Highs to approve, fan and artist and creator too. This is how the challenge is too. What? Keep the conversation moving along. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast with Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower. Patrick Brower and W. Dal Bush. W. Dal Bush. Dal Bush. Dal Bush. Dal. 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 W. Dal Bush. I said, let's record a podcast, Patrick. Don't just press the button and then not press the button. Press the button so we're recording so we can record a podcast. I demand it. I thought you were going to expound upon what you were just saying about everything being a scam. It is. The end. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, the scam bit came because we just got a two cent deposit via PayPal from a company called Snackable. And this is a, a common occurrence now where, I mean, every day we are both inundated, bombarded even, with emails about people that want to sell us Shopify services, want to do social media marketing for us, video marketing, all sorts of marketing, uh, uh, a way to increase sales. The ones I get a lot now, I get a ton of, do you need financing for your business? But it's all like predatory loan companies, basically. So it's like, uh, not from you guys. But then the other thing- That I being said, if you're listening and want to loan us some money or just give us some money, we'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Uh, you can send it to 1845 Northwestern Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Um, specifically, No, no, don't. Hey, you can go to Black River that way. Yeah, it's true. Um, no, all of the mail goes to us, and then we have to disperse it to whoever else in the building. A except when it's Amazon packages, then it will go to them. Uh, always after hours. No, um, the, so the ones I get are predatory loan companies uh, who are calling me, emailing me, texting me uh, almost literally every hour of the day. Um, and then uh, I get a lot of now, uh, do you want to uh sell your company we've taken brands and uh and and gotten them uh five million dollar buyouts and it's like we are a comic book store in in bucktown in chicago that is not what your business is for like we have uh, less than two hundred thousand dollars worth of merchandise yeah. cost not retail but so cost. i've mentioned this before one of the big problems with a lot of the people reaching out because we're on Shopify and we are publicly discoverable through there, apparently, is that to most people who are reaching out, the assumption is, oh, Shopify is you are a manufacturer, uh, a brand of some sort, and you are releasing your products directly to the public through a Shopify storefront. And it's like, no, we don't own Marvel Comics. We don't own Wait, what happened? DC Comics. We Did don't you lose it? Did you lose our ownership of Marvel Comics? Any of these IP. We are not manufacturing any of this stuff. We are just selling it to the public. So all of these offers you're giving us about how you've taken small brands and uh, you know multiplied their revenue 20 times. It's like, no, you're talking about like a shoe company or you're talking about somebody who makes a specific kind of hoodie or whatever. Like, that's not us. Stop contacting us. As much as I like to think that we are a known entity in the comics retail industry, we are not a brand. No. As much as we like to market ourselves as as a brand, we are not a brand. No. Like, if, if we stop selling comics tomorrow, Challengers would not have anywhere near the revenue it has. There's nothing that we have beyond a store identity that is inherently valuable or could generate income we will have some cute enamel pins a handful of tote bags which are just about gone some bumper stickers some bumper stickers yeah uh some regular stickers uh-huh and uh greeting cards yep and uh i mean don't forget uh copies of dual power bomb number one sure <laughs> and you know a bunch of art some, prints some rogues gallery prints bunch of art prints yeah. we, our gallery we so, shut I down mean, almost 10 years ago we're not <laughs> a brand 
Yeah, speaking of ten years ago, it's uh, ten. It was. It's been almost eleven years that IT Crowd has been off the air. I'm sorry, Patrick. Yeah, I know. Maybe I know so. it still hurts. We're not a brand, but anyway, what we got was a uh, a deposit into our PayPal account of two cents because this TikTok marketing company wants to give us their two cents about how they could get increase our revenue. Always, and it is such a weird thing that like. How many companies do you think they're reaching out to where they're giving away two cents per? I, I'm, I'm sure like the return on, let's say you, you give, you know, two cents to a hundred different stores and one of them emails you back. Whoa, that's two dollars. That's, I'm sorry, that's two dollars. That's the investment is basically like, it'll, it only costs you two dollars to contact a hundred stores. It's definitely cheaper than cold mailing somebody. One of the neat emails I've gotten recently, and I, I don't think I saved it, I think I deleted it, um, is one of the marketing emails where they're clearly just scraping stuff on our website and filling it into their format. Uh, I got a marketer reaching out about how they just saw on our website um, that we just released uh, Crocodile Black Number One Cover D. And that's such a cool product. And they just think there's a way that they can market that to way more people and get a way bigger return on, on our investment. I get those all the time. <laughs> and they even do a mock-up of an ad yeah. featuring, uh, featuring Crocodile Black Number One yeah, Cover D. Just like They're just scraping the site, whatever yeah. pops up. And it's like they don't pick okay. the first thing that comes up. They dig nope, a little. They dig a little. And this the same company, the same uh, woman who runs it, and assuming it's a real person and not just an AI, will follow up like every week. Hey, you didn't respond to last week, so look, here's this week's potential ad mm -hmm. thing. Uh, I've got other ones where it's uh, people are like, uh, like they won't scrape an item; they'll scrape a, a product category to say like, hey, you've got a, a great group of products here. Uh, we think you could be doing so much more with O four dash other publisher. <laughs> We could. That's we absolutely could. It's just an in internal coding for what we call non Marvel and DC uh, single comics. But okay, sure, thanks. But they're not wrong. We could do more. We with could, it. could be doing more with it. It's a constant complaint that I have that the majority of phone calls, emails, and even a tiny percentage of in store interactions are people trying to to get money from us yeah to get us to buy something from them it's like boy that's not what we're here for that is just, you're doing this backwards. i want people who call to want comics you that, know that is specifically why i'll we, still be rude to you on the phone but i'll be a different kind of rude why we don't buy stuff is because i don't want to be dealing with being the customer in that scenario i don't like that i don't enjoy that um the difference is presumably when someone comes into our store they're looking to buy a comic. That's why they came in. You know, there's the percentage of people that their car's getting worked on. Thank some you. they're waiting for their haircut appointment. Sometimes, a lot of times in the weekends, just they're just walking through the neighborhood. Avas I mean, is too crowded. Yeah, I mean, the they amount want of people who come in with, with Avas Italian Ice, or they come in with something from Dark Matter, or whatever. I mean, it's, I gave it's a busy neighborhood. Uh, I don't know. I, I complained to one of our uh, club members because they had gotten the delinquent email, came in, bought their books, and then went to Ava's, and then posted on Instagram, an Instagram story about, look what we got at Ava's. I'm like, where's the, look what we got at Challenger's post. Well, Though, that, that Ava's experience, that's gonna be gone in 15 minutes. Sure. Well, Your comics, you can have forever. But keep in mind, this is someone who's delinquent, so the odds of them even looking inside the bag of stuff they got is probably not gonna happen until like two months from now, I, I mean, if ever. This was their first time delinquent. Okay. But it's like, what, wait, why, like, look, look what we got from Ava's. Look what we got from Challengers. How nope. about that? Nope. Sarah Varone, who we're doing a signing with on June 8th for uh, Detective, Detective Sweet Pea, Case of the Golden Bone, she came in yesterday with a budget of what to spend and took the majority of our suggestions, as well as some books of her own that she wanted to get. And I mean, not the ones she made, but choices of hers yeah books that she knew had come out recently and she wanted to come pick up and stuff that she found on the shelf Me. uh there was a little bit of picking up a lot of books inside sidekicks saying what's this about how's this one how does this one i'm like i haven't read every book in this room it's a little uh daunting to try to keep up with the amount of younger reader but uh, sure. uh, i'm just going to call sidekicks elementary how many elementary books sure. have come out regularly and how 
fast they come out. And I was trying to give her uh, my take on how the the there's like you know thirty or forty new ones every month that we have to choose from. Yeah. And then you have to see what sells and what you're going to keep getting. Yeah. And then wait for some stuff to be bought so we can just take it out of the system and not get it again. Mm -hmm. Like it is a a recurring issue. Sure. With space and uh, but the the sheer volume of elementary and YA books that come out is just I can't keep up. There's a lot. Yeah, I, I think in general, like I try to have an at least an awareness of like what the content is for everything that we get. But, um, you know, it's it's like anything. If we got 100 new things in in a week, how many of those would we actually recommend? Not a right. high number. Yeah. And it's the same thing with, you know, the, the kids graphic novels where how many would I genuinely recommend? One or two a week, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that, that seems like a, still a pretty high number. That's a lot of recommendations. But she took her purchases and posted them all on Instagram and also tagged all the creators for each book. It was like six books. That was very nice of her. Yeah, it was real nice. She came in specifically for the new Vera Brogsall Plain Jane and the Mermaid. Several people did. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. I mean, it was. I remember when it was uh, announced and I wanted to put it on the uh, call out at the register. The 11 by 17. Uh, glossy print of well, it's actually a matte print, right? Of what we uh, are recommending out of the month's catalog, sure. But unfortunately, with that call out in particular, we've had a kind of learning experience of like we would put stuff like that. We'd be like, "Oh man, it's the new Vera Brown School gra graphic novel." Like we got to tell people about that. But the problem is, most of the people who are looking at that, I, they would not even know what that is. You would have to physically pitch that, or they're just not the audience for it. So we kind of have to tailor that a bit more for essentially like the people who are actively using it and lean into that and be like, okay, well, what stuff are they going to sign up for? And it's largely going to be like a lot of new major publisher, Marvel, DC image, things by recognizable creators. Like even the stuff that we've personally been excited about from major publishers, but by smaller creators or, or independent books that have like cool ideas. Like honestly, like I Heart Skull Crusher would have been something that I don't know that we would have put on that call out because we would we would have to explain that to everybody, yeah, and that's the, not what that's the for. The call your cheat is to for people to look at and say, oh, I didn't know this is a new Tom King, Jenny Sparks book. Right. I'll order that because I like Tom King. Right. Or I'm interested in Jenny Sparks being a Batman because you see the images. Or this is a new Ultimate Black Panther book, so I'll get that. Yeah. Like, I don't even need to know what the creators are. I see it's Ultimate. I see it's Black Panther. I'm going to want that. Um, so it's more about awareness of things that people are already primed to want rather than creating buzz for something in particular but when we put up it, something like it doesn't work pine and merrimack by kyle starks mm -hmm. you have to put new kyle starks book and then people will be like what is that yeah again you have to explain it they don't have a context for what it is so a lot of that stuff we end up just ordering high and then the week it comes out being like hey pine and merrimack check this out or uh, i know molly will do it frequently with uh foc stuff where yeah. the foc email will be hey there's a new kyle stark series coming out and since this is an email that you're reading, here is the solicitation text. And here are the things that right. make you want to read Now it. you can find out what the yeah. book is about. But an 11 by 17 uh, display at the front counter that has 10 or 11 pictures on it is not the space to try and like pitch people on a brand new unknown concept. Their what? eyes just gloss over it. They do not ask any questions. What if, Dal? Mm -hmm. What if we did one of those specifically for sidekicks? Um, that would be interesting. I would be curious if that would work. It would, it would, it would take a, a little more research. It would have to be done after the print catalogs come out so we can dig through it a little bit more. It's harder to yeah, cause figure it, that stuff out well, just off of... Well, yeah, mostly because a lot of the content info. that we get for the catalogs in advance are from publishers that don't um, specialize in younger readers or YA material. Um, DC does some YA stuff. Marvel kind of doesn't do nothing. Yeah. Uh, Image rarely does anymore. Um, IDW maybe a little bit, but it's all IP driven stuff. Like the things that we would want to promote would be things from like Scholastic for a second. Sure. Uh, Harper, uh, Random House, uh, Random House Graphic. I don't know if that even exists anymore, but the Random House younger reader stuff. So it's all things that would take a little longer to to promote. I think it might be worth a shot doing it. Okay. Would it say the same thing like manage your subscriptions at challengerscomics.com or would it be ask at the counter how to get these? 
Um, I would do both. I would put the QR code or like, or talk to us at the counter and we'll tell you how to pre-order upcoming graphic novels because we would still want people using the managed comic system. Right. But it would just be, hey, here's, you're pre-ordering something, but you're not paying for it in advance. We'll notify you when it comes in and then you'll come grab it. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be cool. I, I talked about this a while back, but two of the, the things that I just, I wish we could do more with, with managed comics is, uh, manga readers and younger readers or parents of younger readers, basically. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Like, why not do a manga one as well? well? So, but here's the problem we have with manga is that new stuff doesn't sell. Yeah. Um, the things that I always think it'd be valuable for is like, hey, we will let you know when the next issue of Chainsaw or the next volume of Chainsaw Man comes out or the next whatever. But like all we're ever selling is the old stuff. We're only ever selling backlist. This managed comics would not be valuable to the people who are slowly working their way through Tokyo Ghoul. It yeah, just isn't. Uh, at, at ASIN over the weekend, uh, Goblin Market was set up, and one of the things they said that they could have sold a ton more of was Dick Fight Island. Sure. Which is a two-volume series that came out how many years ago? I mean, a few years ago, for yeah. sure. And it, I mean, it's, it's a done... It was two, a, two volumes. It's done. Yeah. I, I mean, but, I, like, that's a thing that people were still discovering now. I think it's just the thing where... I, I've said this before, and I, I, I vacillate on doing it because it's just... It feels fruitless a lot of the times. Uh, but just everybody who gets a manga book, not just giving them a, a Managed Comics bookmark, which I've been doing, again, to nothing, uh, but kind of pitching them on, hey, if there's stuff you're looking for that's coming up, you can always pre-order. You can pre-order stuff we would never carry. Yeah. And we will make sure we get it for you. Like if there's anything you're looking to try out from, I we, we don't order everything from Seven Seas or from... Square Enix, sorry, or from, sorry, Morgan, or from Tokyo Pop, or from honestly from Viz. We don't order everything from that's Viz. True. That's definitely true. We we have to pick and choose a lot of stuff because space is at a limit, and we're picking the things that are consistently selling. If people started pre-ordering stuff, it would let us know there was a demand for it, and we would probably start carrying it for the shelf. Um, I don't want to toss more work into somebody else's lap, but if you can ask samantha to more consistently go through previews and start circling the stuff that we should be carrying yeah well okay but but i know her tastes are not right don't match up the with things, a lot of those so we i frequently or not frequently but i in the past i used to knowing when things are special order for her especially new series i get one for the rack i do that and, i do the and same they, thing they don't FOC. they don't go some stuff does but like i do have to kind of pick and choose because it's like i cannot we cannot stock every boys love manga we can't there's too many I, but I, she can she, buy them all. She can order them all, and she does. But we have to pick and choose which of those we carry. And uh, she's yeah. read 101 manga volumes so far this year. I believe it. She gets a lot of manga. Yeah. She gets more manga than anyone else in our subscription service. She gets more manga than most people get comics. Yeah. Uh, I I kind of love it when, if she hasn't been in for like five weeks because mm -hmm. it's schedule changing or whatever, sure. and her books are just piled up, I'll just stack it up and take a photo. And I'm longing for the day when it's taller than she is. Yeah, we're, we'll get there at some point. Um, yeah, I think this past week alone, I think it was like five or six books came in for her. Uh, on on a, one of those Saturday, a normal Saturday when someone's like, oh, man, I'm buying a lot. I just go, yeah, look at that pile. Mm -hmm. Look at all them mangas. So do you think that there is value in the Manage Comics Challengers bookmark? Um, I think generally there is. Uh, but unfortunately, it just... it Like, and... I, not to get too much into the weeds on this, but I guess that's what this podcast is. The Managed Comics bookmark works really well on people who are getting a lot of mainstream stuff because a lot of them are already familiar with the idea of a subscription service. Sure. And they're familiar with the idea of recurring issues of series. What I think it doesn't work on, or at least that we need to do a better job of educating people on, as, as fruitless as it can feel most of the time, as much as it feels like you are pitching people who could not care less and you are wasting your time and their time, is the people who are coming in, you know, every three or four months for a stack of kids' graphic novels, or the people who are coming in every three or four months for a stack of manga to go, you can pre-order stuff and it will be waiting for you. Like you can you can order stuff that we would never carry. You can order brand new stuff. But I think again, the problem is for both of those audiences, they don't know or care about new stuff. There's nothing coming up that they're super excited about because they're working through Everything that we already have, like the people who are, are, are signing up for Managed Comics, 
frequently are people who will see an upcoming release on the 11 by 17 display, or they'll see a poster, or they'll see an ad in another book and be like, oh, I heard they're doing a new Ultimate Spider-Man series, or oh, I heard they're restarting the X-Men books, or oh, I heard that Hickman has a new Wolverine series he's doing with Greg Capullo. And they're aware of this stuff, and they're like, how do I make sure I get that? I'm excited about that. But again, with, with manga and the kids stuff, I don't feel like our audience knows or cares about new stuff. They're, they will just come in and they'll just get another couple of volumes of My Hero Academia from the teens and 20s, which is like four years ago. Yeah. And it doesn't, they don't care. Like they will, they, it will take them so long to reach the point where they are anxiously awaiting the next volume of something or where they need to pre order an upcoming kids' book. I, I'll, we'll keep trying, but it, I, I cannot crack that nut. I have no idea how to get either of those groups to care about upcoming books. Well, the reason I was asking is because it's time to reorder. I just want to make sure you're okay with getting more managed comics books. Sure. Books. Yeah. Any, any changes? I'm going to change the back image. I got to look at it. Okay. Uh, I don't have one handy to look at, so I couldn't tell you what I would change on it. But yeah, I mean, let me, let me take a look at it like on Sunday or something. Oh, I was going to order them tomorrow. Oh, can you maybe wait a couple of days? I mean, we are just about out. Do you think it's going to be a huge difference ordering them Friday versus ordering them Tuesday? I assume you can't order them Monday because it's Memorial Day. I can order them at any point. I just do it online. But I mean, they won't process it probably. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, if you can bring, if you can let me see one before you order it. Okay. I would just to give it a once over and see if there's anything sure. that I would change. That would be neat. Um, I have a story yeah. real quick about a couple of years ago. There is a, a family who's in the subscription service, and the, the youngest child is a big manga fan. So several years ago, we're like, hey, what gets you excited about manga? What's a manga that you love? Mm -hmm. Especially something we don't carry. Yeah. And she's like, okay, my favorite manga is, I can't remember the name. I think it was Moriarty. Was it? I know that was one of the two okay. titles. So I don't know that that was it. Anyway, so it was one we didn't carry. Mm -hmm. So we ordered it, and both Sam and I read it and did not like it. <laughs> it was not at all. I'm like, man, are, is, this, are, is this what the kids want? Oh, this isn't good. And Sam's like, no, I didn't like it either. I remember specifically ordering the Moriarty one because of that, and it, I think, never sounded like <laughs> And again, just feeling like, and I mean, this is a huge problem with manga is like, I feel like if you looked at Marvel and said, okay, what five Marvel books should we carry? It would be real easy to go, well, these are the five best selling ones. And I think 90% of people who come in would probably want them. Like, are there people who are going to want smaller titles or, or ones that are a little bit more niche? Of course they will. Yes. But these five are the ones you can do. Same thing at like Image, Vault. And I know these are publishers and not genres, but I think, or, or, or whatever, mediums. Um, but you you could do it for any yeah, genre. I could like do it for sci-fi fantasy. The top five superhero comics. Right, or... or I could do it for the mystery graphic novel section. I could say like, well, if you're going to carry five, these are the five yeah. you should carry. Yeah. And it wouldn't just be five Brubaker Phillips ones, even though that alone would probably be a, a valid suggestion. But with manga, it just feels like if you ask any manga fan, you are doing the thing where like a group of blind men are describing an elephant by each whatever section they're touching. And it's like, you're not even looking at one market anymore. You're looking at like a Venn diagram of like nine different markets that have a middle section where it's like what anime is on right now. And that's it. Yeah. Like if you could, if you're getting anything, just target that. Target the what anime is currently playing because that's the stuff that everyone's always going to come and ask. So it's for. five blind men describing an elephant, and the elephant is watching anime. One, one Piece on Netflix, not even anime. They're just oh, wow. watching the live, live action. <laughs> wow. Um, but I mean, that stuff helps. Like that's that that is the thing that moves the needle every time. Is oh, there's a new season of Attack on Titan, or oh. Kaiju number eight started playing, or oh, uh, they did a One Piece adaptation. There was we needed to, to move a graphic novel off the front table to be able to put the new Transformers volume on, and Dal said to me, "What are we taking off? Immortal Thor or Fantastic Four?" And I immediately had a 
not answer him and help somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you made the call. You're like, I'm pulling Thor because Fantastic Four is a movie coming out and Thor's already done movies. So it's like, yeah, I mean, like, like mass culture media is still a deciding factor for yeah, things. I mean, there's plenty of graphic novels, you know, non-manga stuff that we will absolutely recommend. And even some manga stuff where it's like, I, you know, Junji Ito doesn't get a lot of adaptations, but it's still stuff I mean, where, it, like, we would was, always recommend Junji Ito. It was, uh, I don't know, like a year or so ago when I'm like, we should probably have manga on the front table. Sure. And then we started with, well, the problem is the volume ones we wanted to have, we couldn't get. Frequently, yeah. Yeah. Although, I mean, I, I think it worked. Like, we only, we picked three to start with, and it was... Um, Way of the House Way Husband. Way the House Husband, Berserk. Berserk. Uh, I feel like there was another one. There was. I can't remember what it was. Uh, and I, we've had Junji Ito stuff out on the table frequently. Yeah, when, when it's new, yeah. And when we have a lot of copies, because, again, nobody pre-orders it, and nobody cares about new manga. <laughs> um, so frequently when we're like, Junji Ito, we got to get like 14 of these. First week we sold two. Like, okay, well, I guess we'll sell the rest at some point. And we will. And we, we will, and we did. Like, I, remember I wouldn't the, say easily. <laughs> I remember the point when we decided that, uh, again, I'm going to take credit for this, uh, we stopped okay. racking the Jinji Ito books by title, just put them all under Jinji Ito. Yeah. Except for the ones that are too tall to fit on the shelf, like the right. Cat Diary. Yeah. Those just go up on the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 again, getting back to the main point here, yeah, I guess we'll just have to keep trying to inform people of, hey, did you know you can pre order upcoming all ages? YA and manga graphic novels, even ones we wouldn't normally carry. And you don't pay until they come in. And you can save 5% doing it. Here's a question that I should know the answer to. Which I guess maybe I, that's the stuff we should put on the back of the managed comics. Like just lay out the well, what, I mean, what benefits we, you're getting. We can have signs like that up in sidekicks for one, for no, real. I mean, we do but, both, but like, I, sure. I, that's, I guess, thinking about it now, what was on the back of the managed comics bookmark is maybe we should lay out more of the benefits of the system beyond just like this is a thing you this is how you can do it but just like you get a discount you can order stuff we wouldn't normally carry it's good for pre-orders and subscriptions okay i know so, it's hard to put all in a he, well here here's a thought that i had initially when this bookmark started let me finish my last thought since it's just about summertime we've pulled down all of the help us build pulaski's library signs so there's room to put up other signs that say things like hey you can pre-order stuff right but Initially, and I'm answering now my own question about the bookmark. I, I just had this idea. The point of the bookmark was working with Brian at Manage Comics to promote them and us. Like, hey, Challengers is using Manage Comics. Sure. And have it be a Manage Comics bookmark with the Manage Comics robot. Yeah. And um, in Brass Tax, initially that was a thing that Brian's like, hey, if that's affordable... I'll help you pay for that because mm -hmm. you're promoting managed comics. Sure. We pay for it ourselves. Okay. So we can, sorry, Brian, scrap all that stuff and just be like, hey, here's a QR code. We have subscriptions. You can manage our, your subscriptions. Yeah. I mean, I still like using the managed comics branding, not maybe as prominently. We, um, can, we can get rid of the robot. Sure. Because that takes up, that's like a, large portion of the yeah i mean i'd still like there to be a graphic on it because when we're giving the bookmarks out i always want it to feel like it has value beyond just promotion the whole backside is us i guess maybe i i i like it to be something where it again it feels like hey you're getting a cool bookmark that has all this extra version on it sure rather than just hi well, we're promoting here's the thing this. about bookmarks you should just look at it one side sure uh here's what we're gonna do okay you're going to give me the information you want on it, and then I'll work with getting it on there. Sure. And again, like I, I like the idea of still including managed comics as a, as a concept because I like people understanding that that is a service that we are offering. Yeah, is... I'm, I'm always just worried that people think that managed comics is a separate store. Oh, I don't think I've ever had that impression from people. Yeah, managed comics is just a way to manage your comics. Sure. Um. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll jot it down. But again, I think it's just four bullet points. Um, save on your in-store and online purchases when you're an active subscriber. Uh, you can pre-order stuff that we wouldn't normally carry. Uh, we'll contact you as soon as it arrives. Uh, you don't pay for it till you come in. 
I think those are the four things. Like, I think those are collectively would entice people to at least investigate the platform. Now I'm going to have you say that again, mm -hmm. just to see if you remember it all. Sure. Uh, you can save on online and in-store purchases when you're an active subscriber. You can pre-order stuff we wouldn't normally carry. Slow down. <laughs> I thought we were testing me, not you. We're not testing me. We're testing my ability to write down. Okay. Go on. Uh, so discount. Uh, you can order stuff we wouldn't normally carry. Uh, you, we will contact you as soon as it arrives. And you don't pay for it until uh, it comes in. I would probably phrase these in slightly different ways, but those are the basic concepts. Well, I'm writing exactly how you're saying it. <laughs> well, you might need to massage that yeah. for how it looks on the bookmark. But yeah, I think those are the four main bullet points. Like, I think each of those I would maybe, if I was sitting down at a, at a keyboard, I would write them in a slightly punchier, more exciting way. Sure. You mean pay on arrival isn't punchy? Exclamation mark. <laughs> you know how you make them punchy? Instead of being bullet points, they'll be little fists. Ooh, I love it. Punch it up. <laughs> Punch it. Punch it up. Yeah, all of this, and I don't remember if I talked about this on the podcast before, but I was having a, a talk with a um, comic fan, comic buyer, friend of mine, who specifically shops at a store that doesn't put an emphasis on subscriptions and will carry a whole bunch of different covers for the rack. And she likes just being able to go in and pick the cover she wants off the rack. She doesn't like having to pre-order covers. Sure. And I thought... I don't know any stores that really have that luxury. Uh, in today's economy, are you kidding me? I assume that the very large mail order stores can do it, but that defeats the purpose. That is, mail order at that point, you might as well just be pre-ordering it. Like a, a physical store that you can go in that just like we carry every open order variant for every book would be, I can't, there's no way that business model works. There's so much stuff that are done as like, uh, themed monthly variants where if you get caught with those. Do you remember when DC would just have like one theme a month? Now there's so many themes. So many. I remember. So many themes. So many issues of the current uh, Josh Williamson Superman series where I would look at the DC catalog and be like, how are you doing nine covers for issue five? How is that <laughs> feasible? I can't believe they're doing the DC style guide variant covers by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Mm -hmm. A, they're doing that. They're horizontal images. So Which they're makes doing more sense. Like, when they first showed them off, I'm yeah, like... Yeah, but that's still ugly. Yeah, it's not great. But it's better than a wraparound where the back of the character is on the front of the book. But also, a company is reproducing the actual style guide for mm -hmm. people to buy. I assume that's why they're doing this in the first place is they suddenly had access to cleaned up artwork for all that. Yeah. And went, oh, we could just color this. I, I have had uh, photos of the style guide for a while. And uh, I'd gotten the photos and uh, my good friend Steve put them together into one file. And then I needed him to reduce them so they were emailable because <laughs> it was way too big of a file. But like that's the way I've ever gotten to see the style guide. Mm -hmm. And so this new company, it's a, it's a textbook slash manual reproduction company. Uh, manual being like service manuals or like sure. guides. Who's, like style who's, guides. Who's printing this? And uh, my friend Ed from New Jersey was talking about uh, having like ordering it. And I'm like, I just ordered it because all I've ever had so far was this one. And I sent him the link to that folder. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh man, you have the original? I'm like, oh no, no, I didn't explain this oh, well. No. I just have these photos of someone else's original. Uh -huh. So I'm very happy to... Uh, get the actual guide. Yeah, physical copy. Yeah, it's, nice. a little, it's a little pricey, but I think that were it to become available to stores like us to sell, I think it'd be a thing that we could get people interested in. I hope so. I, I mean, it's $100. I We haven't finalized our orders on it yet, but I remember feeling a little disappointed with the pre-order numbers for the DC versus Marvel Omnibuy yeah. that were listed. Like That just seemed like a thing where, oh my God, 
like everyone's going to want this. The whole industry is freaking out. Like I remember everyone flipping out over JLA Avengers, which is not included in this, but still was like, yeah. oh my God. And this is, you can just order it. It's not a limited edition item, but it is a one print run item. So anybody who didn't pre-order it, you're going to be paying. If you decide you want it next year, get ready to pay at least double cover, maybe more. Sure. And this is like, these are $150 Omnibuy. This is not something most stores can afford to order just like a few dozen just to have them for a while. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars. I'm assuming that the DC Style Guide is going to be the same thing where it's one print run only. Probably. But still, it is something of a legend like DC's Cancel Comics Cavalcade. Cancel Comics Cavalcade, exactly what I was going to say, yeah. Sure, that exists in a photocopied... Uh, a degenerative photocopy that's photocopies of photocopies of photocopies. Yeah, spiral bound. Yeah. Uh, one of those thick, solid plastic black yeah. spirals. Yeah, whatever they call those. Yeah. Again, for, you know, Bible-sized books. Mm -hmm. Still, comics history right there, man. What can you do? Yeah, that's pretty neat. So let's segue from comics history to Challenger's very, very current history and current history. I love it. I have the present. Some call it. Uh, I have. Well, it's the it's a it's the past. It's four days ago. Okay. I have little involvement of this story except for behind the scenes ma machinations. I know what we're talking and, about. And uh, <laughs> te technical advice. Uh -huh. But uh, I guess I'll set it up and then you can run with it. Okie doke. The good people at Black River Barbershop next to us who've been in that spot for, I don't know, four years now? I think they opened in... Uh, sure. I don't know when they opened, like 2019 maybe? Five years? Just like our flooring in Sidekicks and presumably under the carpet in Challengers, their floor has a lot of uh, a lot of cracks and it's uneven mm -hmm. and it just wasn't finished. One of the things, well, I mean, it, it technically was, but one of the things I always wanted to do to Sidekicks is to redo the floor like it's a garage floor, specifically the kind of sealant they use that keeps oil off of it. Uh, it's like like a thick epoxy, but also like you can get colors and stuff. Like, basically, like, non-shiny glitter sprinkled through. Okay. Um, the way garage floors or industrial floors are done now to make them more presentable and, you know, um, better for public or whatever. Okay. And my sister had her garage done um, a while ago, and I love it. And I'm like, man, I totally want this. But it's super expensive. Mm -hmm. And we never carpeted sidekicks because... It wasn't carpeted when we got that space, and it was just too expensive at the time. Yeah. And also didn't fit in the construction plans. So we just used large area rugs, and we got new ones last year. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of cracks in that floor. Most people don't see it. Fine. Who cares? But specifically, Black River had a big crack in their floor. They wanted it to seal up. Mm -hmm. So they had um, a construction person who worked on that spot when they moved in, they were coming in to refinish the floors. And that means taking everything out of it, out of mm -hmm. the barbershop. Closing for a day. Closing for a day, and then basically like leveling out the floors and then um, resurfacing it. Mm -hmm. And giving it a nice, you know, thick gloss epoxy cover or what have you. Okay. So that was happening last weekend. I know mm -hmm. they started emptying the store Saturday night. And they, all day Sunday was when it was going to be done. It was like yep. a five-hour process. You could hear them working out during the day. Yeah. And there was a, the, the back hallway was all like barber chairs and a, yep. a refrigerator, that stuff. So it was a five-hour process for Sunday. Monday morning, I get a text from Dow. So Monday morning, I get in a little early. I frequently do on Sundays and Mondays. Uh, we had some orders to pack up. So I got into the back and, and I... Uh, went up to the front and I had the, the list of what I needed to grab. So I just grabbed a couple books off the shelf and put them down on the, the black counter behind the, the, the register. And I went to grab a, a bag and a board because the person had ordered some bags and boards for their books. 
when I grabbed the bo the the bag and board, the the flap at the top was a little dusty, and I'm like, it's weird. Like it shouldn't be dusty. We replace those all the time. It's not like it's been sitting there for like a few months. Yeah. Then I go to the where the books were on the the black counter, and I run my finger across the counter. A bunch of dust comes up. I pick up a pile of books that had been on that counter overnight. Underneath, completely clean. Around it, you can see a much lighter tone of like, oh, there's dust all over this. I, I run my finger along the books. There's dust here. Why is there so much dust? And I start walking around the store. And I'm looking at the red bookshelves, which at this point now we're 15, 20 feet away from behind the counter. Dust on every shelf. Get to the back. Dust on top of the back issues. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, go into sidekicks, dust on the shelves. Go into the back room, dust on everything. I'm like, oh man, there's dust everywhere. Like literally covering every surface in our, the, the storefront, in the back rooms, everywhere. And not sidekicks, challengers, back of challengers, back of sidekicks. Everywhere. So I text Patrick, I'm like, hey. There's dust everywhere. Like whatever construction they were doing probably got into the HVAC and then got into our store overnight. So I'm going to have to spend the next several hours cleaning everything because there's dust everywhere. So uh, I contact, or I text Nick and Nina from next door. Unbeknownst to me, Nick is in Michigan. Uh, recording a new album for the band Dust Biters that he and Barbara... Ir Barbara ironically, yes. Yeah, exactly. So Nina's like, how is that even possible? Well, it turned out that the guy who was doing their floors, it was not a five-hour job because his sander broke and it took him uh, 20 hours straight to get everything done. But while he was sanding, he had the back door open. So that was sending everything and they had fans moving, you know, not, not pulling air up, pushing air down. Mm -hmm. So it was sending everything out into the back. And right past the back doors is our HVAC closet. Yep. And uh, our HVAC closet, we keep the door A, unlocked, uh, and B, partially open because when you close that door, it has a habit of locking. <laughs> And that is not a key that we keep handy because it's not a thing we ever lock, but it locks like people because that back hallway gets a lot of use from barbershop customers. Mm -hmm. The door gets closed on its own a lot. Mm -hmm. Like people would just walk by and push on a door like they do on the outside of doors as well. Right. And that door locks occasionally, which is frustrating. And because of the way the building is built, a lot of the doors in the back hallway, especially the bathroom doors and the, the uh, mop room door, they they don't go down to the floor there's like a two inch gap at the bottom right so with this door being open a little bit it was the first place for all of the concrete dust to get into and it yep. hit uh right with the intake for the hvac mm -hmm. it uh as dal said got into the system and dispersed itself everywhere yeah, it went up into the vents and the vents drop off everywhere all over the store everywhere and Nina's like, how's that even possible? I'm like, well, I'm not there, but I'm presuming it, it, it was like this. It did that. And she's like, well, we're closed today. We weren't supposed to be closed today, but we have to be closed today because he's still there. I'm going to send him over <laughs> to help you clean. So, yeah, uh, just as I'm, I'm, I just cleaned behind the front counter uh, because I, like, I, I think I told them at one point uh, when I was explaining the situation later in the day. The first part was the most frustrating because I, I needed to put like, like I needed to move stuff off of one section to be able to clean that section, but there was nowhere to move anything to because everything was covered in dust. So it was just trying to mentally create like a puzzle of how do I move this just enough to clean it to put it back so that I can now have other sections clean. And I want to point out that you can't just dust this stuff. You need to scrub it, get it up. You need to use a, a wet rag yeah. or towel or whatever to needs take to it off the surface. Otherwise, you're just pushing it on top of the other dust that's already there. Right. Um, so I'd gotten behind the counter done, and uh, I was out in the back hallway, and then the... Also, I would like to point out that there were 
repeated texts from Dow, and he was, let's just say, kindly unhappy. Uh, as you'll know, Patrick, one of the most frustrating things that can happen when you're about to start your workday is finding something that's going to completely throw your schedule for the day out the window. Yeah. And that's a, a double problem because one, you weren't planning on working on this emergency. You were planning on working on other stuff that needed to be done. But while you have to spend several hours working on this emergency, when you're done with that, now you have to do everything you would have normally done during now the emergency. Now you are hours behind. On top of the other stuff that you still have to do. So basically, your, you know, for me, my six-hour day was three hours of cleaning and then six hours worth of work in three hours, uh, which was very stressful. Um, so I ran into the construction guy in the back hallway. He was super apologetic. I was not willing to be like, hey, don't worry about it. These things happen. Sure. I was super pissed off. So it's like, you're sorry. And thank you for saying that. Doesn't solve my problem. Like, I don't care that you're sorry about this. That doesn't help me at all. Um, so he had offered to start pitching in and cleaning. And I'm like, do you not need to be doing stuff in Black River? Everything's like at a stopping point right now. He just needs to clean up a little bit. And then he'll come help me clean. I'm like, I told you at one point, um, on the one hand, I don't want to say no because I do need the help. It was just me in the store at the time. But I also really want to say no. Because it's his fault just entirely. Out of spite. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to give him a way of like feeling good about this. I believe my response to you was, Oh, I get it. Yeah, I figured you of all people would understand the the spite aspect of like I, this is gonna be more work for me, but also screw you. I do I do want to make a, a small sidebar and I'm I'm not trying to pick this fight, I swear to you. But there have been times when you and I are arguing yes, and you apologize mm -hmm. and I'm still mad. And you say, look, I apologize. Like, we're done here. I don't do that as much. I understand your mentality. I understand how your psychology works. But, but OK, but I, you're I, saying that I, now you just did the same thing to that guy. Like, no, no, no I understand. I like okay. I, it's but I also I didn't say I, I didn't end up doing it. I said. Yes, I do need the help. Like, I genuinely, this needs to get cleaned. And here's another pair of hands. And while I'm angry about this, me saying no to this guy. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help me at all. Like, even saying it doesn't make me feel better. It's just like, okay, now who are you screwing over? Like, I'm screwing over the store. I'm screwing over myself. Yeah. Like, I, I don't. There's a difference between saying, like, Hey, you apologized. The, all the stress is gone for me versus sure. like you apologized. I appreciate you're saying that. This is still a problem. This doesn't become less a problem just because I, I just, you apologized. You understand not wanting to like say, well, we're, we're, the argument's over because you apologized. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't want to get into a, an argument yeah, about and, this. And that's, that's not what the, this whole thing is about. And so. honestly, I don't, that's not really what I ever meant. If that ever, okay. if it came off that way, my intention was never like, I've moved on. It's like, no, I, I, I want this situation to be resolved. So I would rather us have a conversation about it and any lingering ill will rather than just being like, uh, this is going to be a process mentally that's going to take X amount of time and that's the end of it. Yeah, and of course, uh, and this will be the end of this. Uh, I never want to have that conversation. I know, and that's that yeah. frequently becomes a, a All right, tiny so, obstacle. So, so guys, help me. Oh, uh -huh. that's only tiny. Nice. Uh -huh. uh, so guys helped me clean. So guys helped me clean. And, and it was tough because I, the only real stumbling block to anyone helping out was like, I don't know if you know what we do here. Yeah. So I, I put him to work cleaning off the red shelves because I'm in my head. I'm like, I don't want you touching anything else that you think you're just giving it the once over. And I think you are ruining and I have to throw away now. Um, because while this stuff needs to be cleaned, some of it thoroughly, some of it gently. And I can't monitor you. I can't yeah, supervise I can't this. mitigate what you're doing while doing it yeah. myself. All that's going to happen is I'm not paying attention. So I'm going to find out later, oh, thanks. I have to throw away hundreds of dollars worth of things because you clean them in a way that, that made sense to you but doesn't work I just use us. Windex on all the comics. Uh -huh. What's the problem? I don't think you would do that. I know. But like you can, as always with single comics, you can look at them as a person who doesn't care about comics and go, this is fine. And I would look at it and go, this is unsellable now. So I put him to work on, on doing the red bookshelves because that's the thing you need to get elbow grease on. Like, yeah. And it, even at first he's like, oh, I should take all the books off. I'm like, don't worry about this stuff under the books. That's clean. 
just do the stuff around the books that's dirty. So he started working on that. And then uh, Nina showed up from Black River. Um, you had talked to her and yeah. she had, had decided that she should come in because they this was kind of their responsibility. And also they were not working that day. <laughs> so uh, she came in and then uh, three other people from Black River came yeah. in over time. Uh, huge props to Nina and Brian and Emma and yeah. Izzy because Nina realized what was happening and decided first she's like, okay, I'm going to go in. I feel so bad. I'm going to get Dal a Jersey Mike's <laughs> gift card and McDonald's gift card to show that I'm sorry. Which is very considerate. And and in difference to how I, I had reacted to the construction guy, when Nina came in, I'm like, you couldn't have predicted this. Yeah, I mean, it's not, not feel bad about this. It's, 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 not her it's responsibility. because of your floors, but you yeah. didn't do this. Yeah. You didn't tell the guy to do this. I guess in a way it's, it's her responsibility, but it's not her fault. But I guess she had called that the other barbers who would have been working to say, come in anyway. Right. You're all helping us clean challengers. So and all... Nina, Nina told me that from the way I was describing it, she didn't realize how bad it was. Right. Then she got there. And she's like, it was so much worse. They all realized than it. I was expecting it to Which be. Which honestly was a minorly made me feel good because yeah. when I'm looking so at this, like, I'm they're... like, this is hours of work. I like we are going to be finding weird little dust things. Forever. For, for months. Um, two quick things. The photo you sent doesn't do it justice, like how bad it was. Sure. Um, that was and, because and also, at, at, at a certain point, I'm like, I don't want to take photos anymore. I just want to work. Sure. <laughs> Did you have flashbacks to the doorway? To... Yeah, I was going to mention, like, yeah. we, uh, years and years ago, um, probably 12 years ago by this point, maybe longer, uh, we had cut a hole in the wall of Challengers to bridge the space that would, at the time, become the Rogues Gallery. Um, it's the, a cinder block wall. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's the the crew that cut into it. I mean, it was they uh, put tarps over everything and taped them down. Yeah, um, there is dirt under the boxes of our subscription boxes that will never ever ever come off, and that is from that doorway. And that is over a decade ago. We cannot get rid of it. We, honest to God, if we could get those boxes again, probably should have just thrown those boxes away. It's honestly like 15 years at this yeah. point. It, so we can clean this stuff, but it some of it will never, ever, ever be gone. And I don't know why that happens with dust. But when I saw this, I'm like, I had that sink in my stomach of we're going to be dealing with this for years. You I can mean, only imagine how years. the tops of the ducks look uh, without getting too far ahead of the story. I've been in Black River since then, and while they cleaned everything for them, all the light fixtures and all the ducts sure. are gray when they're supposed to be black. Yeah. Um, there's stuff that I didn't even realize until later. I'm like, oh, the mirrors probably need to be cleaned. Oh, yeah. the cameras probably need to be cleaned. Oh, like there was just a, uh, I, I didn't even think about it until later, but like, oh, the tablet was in the back, like our register. So I had to clean that off yep. because it's like, oh, just minor things that you don't, again, the dust got everywhere. So even things that were like um, underneath, like on a shelf, and you'd think, well, okay, well, there's a thing above it that, that's going to protect that. No, that got dusty. And then the shelf below it got dusty, like back in it. Like it's like it, it just suffused the atmosphere of every cubic inch of challengers and it just got on stuff. So the only way it would be protected is if it was not exposed to air at all. So books deep in a stack, uh, fine. But like anything facing out, dusty. So our HVAC also services the restrooms and the back hallway. All of Black River stuff that they moved to be out of the blast area mm -hmm. got coated yep. because it was in the black hallway and it's in our HVAC. Here's something though that probably going to blow your mind ready for it the back of challengers the back room dust everywhere right yeah huh there's no vents in there i think it must have come under the doors or something but i mean because again it was that how much it can there ever possibly have been to get under the door the last thing i'd done after uh the black river crew had had helped out a lot and things were kind of in a decent shape was vacuum the floor and it was insane how much dust was coming up. oh sure like how th yeah how thick it was on the floors i mean one of the things i told you was you can't run the air conditioner 
until I can replace the filter. Right. It's, in, and yet it's we still industrial. had to because it was a hot day and we couldn't even leave the door open for that long. But overnight, turned off the turned off the AC entirely. Didn't just like run it at a lower temperature or higher temperature. Turned it off. Our um, our filter for the HVAC is twenty by twenty five by four. So it's a it's a hefty one. Mm-hmm. And when I pulled the dirty one out, it weighed like two pounds. Yeah, a lot of dust. And um, we're going to most likely need to change it in a month or so because there's a lot of dust trapped in those vents. We're going to have to clean the vents. Mm-hmm. But we're also finding, like in Sidekicks, little bursts of dust that might that were caught in a vent now just puff out. Right. I think that the issue with Sidekicks specifically is because that's a, a shared HVAC with uh... the the direction. Like a lot of the vents in Challengers go one way, but in Psychics, they get they go both directions for each yeah. uh, register. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun one, and also like that guy had closed off all the vents for Black River. Mm-hmm. We just uh, didn't think of that at all nor would i have wanted to because that's a a lot of ladder climbing the high up ladders and closing all the vents and whatnot well it's going to be someone else's job to climb up there and and clean that out uh but yeah again it was great that uh all the barbers came in yeah to help clean not nick not nick though he was in another state that's fine it's fine but yeah uh, like um i could notice the next time i was in where whoever was uh, mopping the cement floors and sidekicks where they didn't get, like, mm-hmm. behind the little golden book racks or sure. behind Batman. Yep. You're like, oh, yeah, it is definitely a different color. Yep. So now that's a couple days removed, you happy with how the store is? Uh, I was glad to go in Tuesday and not have it be dusty again. Yeah. That was nice. I was able to get more done. It was a busy day. Gina stopped by on Wednesday and had uh, her dog Nandor with her mm-hmm. uh, on a, a funky like body leash, and she was going to go in the back hallway to to get him water. I'm like, um, I don't know how good those floors are. Yeah, you may get his paws covered in uh, concrete dust. So she just carried him, and uh, we didn't clean the bathrooms or anything. No, but I, didn't. I did. I asked Nina how bad the stuff was in the back. She's like, it all had to be cleaned off. I'm sure. Which. <laughs> I mean, you had to move it to get to the floor, but it's like, oh, it's almost defeating the purpose of, of getting Pretty it out much. of the blast radius. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if, and like this is a, a guy that does everything by himself. He's not part of a, a contracting company or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's just like a handyman guy. Yeah. But I wonder if the better way to do it would be to have like a um, a vacuum system while it's going to, to clean everything up. As Maybe it's if his sander had been working, that would have been something that happened. No, I well, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I think the sander, because he had to do a lot of it by hand, and that's not as fine of a, I, I, don't, I don't, I wasn't there. I don't know how he did it. Mm-hmm. It seemed like it was a nightmare for him as well. Like I said, sure. it would be five hours and it took him 20. And then they had to wait the whole next day for it to dry. Uh, but so I was in there on Wednesday. I'm like, oh, there's the crack. Like. It's covered, but it's still there, yeah. and it's going to settle to where you see it more. It's not great. And also, they had picked different colors for the floor mm-hmm. than before, but it's basically the same. Like, yeah. it dried different or something? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying it is, it's like having a car drive through your front window. Like, it disrupts everything, and you have no control over it. Nope. And... No one did it maliciously. No. Nope. And it, okay, like that's a severe example because it's structural damage and people could have gotten hurt. And, mm-hmm. um, but it's a huge disruption, and it causes you to just be off your game. The whole sure. Yeah. Did anybody uh, comment on it when they were in? So they're like, "Why is it all dusty in here?" Uh, weirdly, people mostly commented on the smell because of all the masonry. Yeah. It, it made the store smell kind of different for a couple days. Was there an epoxy smell, maybe, or no one could okay. really say, like? I never heard a description of the smell. People were just like, "Oh, it smells different." It's like, well, all the stuff was in the ducts. That's why it smells that way. We're trying to keep the door open to get that smell out of here. 
Well, I'm sorry you had to go through that. It wasn't great. Got got free lunch out of it, though. That's true. That was very appreciated. I'm sure you would have rather had your day back. Yeah, I, I would rather pay for my own lunch and not have to worry about cleaning the entire store. Hey, Dal, how was Scarlet number one? I really liked it. Uh, Kelly Thompson's a very fun writer, and uh, I'm really enjoying the G.I. Joe books from Skybound. So I thought Scarlet number one was a, a really good book, uh, very similar to Duke in that it's setting up um, some of the, the other elements of the Joe universe uh, than what Cobra Commander was doing. So they're each kind of picking their own little pocket of things and building that out instead of trying to do everything in one book, which is nice. Who's the artist on it? Do not remember their name. Okay. I didn't remember. I did not read it. Uh, did we get Destro today? No. They shut off the covers, but they didn't have a PDF of the first oh. issue, unfortunately. Dang, I thought there was going to be a PDF in there. I'd hoped. Uh, maybe that'll be tomorrow. I don't know. Well, were Duke and Cobra Can Commander released in the same month or a month apart? I think they were both in the same month. Okay, because these two are also the same month. Mm -hmm. I remember them putting putting them both on the call out. Yeah. What what is what do we call that? I, I need an, there's got to be a better name. I hate calling it the call out. Uh, it's what is it? What is the file folder called that it's in? Just a new series. Yeah, new series, which isn't very descriptive. Yeah. And even just trying to say, oh, it's on the back of the register. It's not. We don't have a register. Right. And it's just in an acrylic display. Yep. The uh, yeah, it just says. New series for August mm -hmm. 2024 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I remember putting them on it. And I had put Destro up, not realizing that Scarlet was also there because her book was so much further down the catalog. Like, they weren't just, like, back-to-back oh, okay. -back pages. Interesting. I thought they were. Yeah. At least the, the uh, whatever online listing I was reading, they okay. were separated by a lot. And so I'm like, oh, I guess it's a different month. Then I had to reformat it. Still waiting for the Marvel um, solicits to go up. I hope they come up Friday. Yeah. The catalog's out next week, so they, they should tell us at some point. Still waiting for them to, to finish doing uh, the new series board. Yeah. And speaking of new things, we are doing a book plate, a new book plate, yeah. for Kyle Starks' Rock Candy Mountain Complete Collection. Yeah. It was a two-volume series from Image years ago. Uh, it's one of the his favorite things he's ever done. And this year, knowing that Karate Palm was on the horizon and Rock Candy Mountain was on the horizon, along with all of the other books he's doing, I'm like, hey, man, we want to do a, a book plate for you, but what book do you want us to do it for? Right. And he chose Rock Candy Mountain. And we got the art last night, and I mocked up the book plate today. Uh, last night, actually, and uh, need to send that off to the printer, have it delivered directly to Kyle Starks' home so he can sign them all and send them right back to us. And then people who buy the complete collection of Rock Candy Mountain, which is out, I want to say, June 19th, if that works. 15, 16, 17. Yeah, June 19th is a Wednesday. Yeah. We'll have it on hand for that. Okay. So we're very excited for that. Yeah. Of course, uh, pre-orders are already closed, so people can't sign up for now. But we'll have a lot of copies of the book. Yep. And going forward as well. Yeah. And it'll most likely be on the front table because it's got a book plate. I would think. Hooray. And also, again, it came out before we were so huge on the Kyle Starks bandwagon. He he had done, like, Sex Castle and uh, Kill Em All, right? Uh, I don't know if that was before or after Rock Candy Mountain. Okay. And I'm pretty sure... Uh, Chris Schweizer colored a candy mountain, mm. just like Karate Prom. Yeah. Kyle Stark's business is a good business to be in. It's true. Makes comic retail that much more worth it. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago. 773-278-0155. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.